So just a little bit about the Harada method. I have a lot of magic in my life. I mean, I, I met Dr. Shigeo Shingo 30 years ago. I met Taichi Ono. I've met so many great people in Japan over the last 30 years and published 250 books on the subject of lean and quality and productivity. And most recently, I met a man called Takashi Harada. What a gift to me because I've been involved with lean and quality and productivity and that's been always focusing on the process side, you know, on the technology side, the machine side. And then I discover Harada, which is really the human side of lean. And he taught a methodology that took children out of the slums and made them into national champions. National champions! Amazing what you can do to people. Now what is the Harada method? Harada method is simply the world's best process in day-to-day -day management developing people to their maximum capability. The world's best, and I'll tell you why it is the world's best, because first of all it works, and it's simple. It is so simple to do, but of course it takes, it takes the doing. The prime thing about the Harada method that is different is you pick a goal. You pick a goal to be successful in life. Well, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I was never asked to pick a goal. When I was a child and I went through the school system, Nobody ever asked me to have a, nobody ever asked me to pick a goal. Well, you pick a goal, an important goal. That's not just good for you, but it's good for your family and it's actually it's good for the society. And the higher the goal, the more powerful it will be for you to attain it because you're not going to let other people down. And then you just brainstorm 60, 64 tasks, 64 things that you have to do to attain that goal. Not so complicated. Okay, then you select 10 of those to get started this month. And then you might take one to do today. But every day you're going to do a task which is going to lead you to attain that goal. And the important thing is you never give up. You never give up. You believe in yourself. I went to the store today. I met a lovely lady who was selling me a strawberry. I never saw it's a white strawberry. I never saw a strawberry white before. She said it's the best in the world. And I believed her. And I'm talking to her. She said, well, she really wants to be a flight attendant. I said, go and do it. But right away, the apprehension, well, maybe they won't accept me. You know, maybe I'm not good enough. I said, forget that nonsense. You just do it. Tomorrow, you go to A&A &A and you become a flight attendant. The brilliant part of Harada Method is you pick a goal. You develop a task to attain the goal. Every day you schedule that task. Sure, you're doing your normal job. That's fine. But you make sure that you're doing this one task today. At the end of the day, did you do what you want to do? And then the last key is you must work with a coach. You have to work with somebody who's going to support you, who's going to pat you on the back, who's going to keep you in the right direction. The Harada Method is the most powerful process that I have discovered in the last 20 years. Thank you very much. So you're the paparazzi. <laughs> we're going we're we're to film everything here on the bus. When we get into a company, we're going to say to the same thing in the company, we want to film. They're going to say no. And then I say, well, can we film in the meeting room? And then they'll say yes. And then I'll say, can I just film that? yes, can I just film that? We'll walk through the plant and we'll say, look, well, how did the Japanese succeed? What did they do? They came to America. Tens of thousands of them came to America at the end of World War II, and they, we opened up our plants, and we let them come in and take pictures. And so they said to the manager, I want to take your picture. And the manager, of course, says, yes. And they would say to the manager, could you stand here? And the manager would stand here. And then they would say to the manager, could you move over just a little bit? <laughs> and then they took their technology back here and look at what they've done. What did Japan do? What did they do? At the end of World War II, this country was destroyed. Such, so much more than I ever knew, you know, from my history books or from the newspapers or from what we were just not taught. We thought it was Nagasaki and Hiroshima. We leveled it and that's it. But we destroyed 100 cities in Japan. Curtis LeMay just bombed the heck out of that country. And they were totally destroyed. How did they go from such destruction? Look at this Tokyo. Look at the cities that we go through. Look at the new buildings. Now, China is doing it, of course. 
But what are they doing and what's happening in our society? When I say, I'm primarily saying America, even though I got one Englishman and one Israeli and four Spanish people, we're all one and the same. What are we not doing that they're doing? And how can we change that? Now that's another thing. How can, you notice I just said, how can we change that? Who's going to change the world? You are, of course. You're going to do it. This group on this trip is going to synthesize. We're going to get the best information that we're going to suck. I've got to be very careful <laughs> with the ladies in the room. But she can handle it. What we're going to do is, look, we're here to suck on the tits of Japan and to take out that nucleus and to bring it back with us. And we can do it. You just have to, <laughs> thank you. You just have to believe what you're capable of doing. What I love on the <laughs> the thing is, what can I give Paul when he has everything? I mean, this man's climbed, climbed Mount Everest. I love that video. That was beautiful. <laughs> it's just wonderful what you could accomplish if you believe in yourself. Okay, so what can I give him? I mean, he's a master of lean. His company is amazing. I love his book very much. And this is real sincerity. What can I give this man who has everything? Okay, this is it. Maybe, I'm not sure. This is it. What the Japanese have that we haven't begun to understand. There's a few things. But one is they have a philosophy. Every Japanese company has a philosophy. They have something that people can believe in. Not just going to work and getting a job, you know, not just going to work making enough money for the stockholders, which is the philosophy in America. They have a philosophy of why we have a business. What is the purpose of our business? Why do I make these products? What is the use of this product to make a great world that we live in? Because the way we've, we've done more damage in the last hundred years than we've done in the last million years of, of, of this earth. And we can't continue with it in this direction. Every corporation that we will visit has a dual responsibility. One is to be successful in business and two is to save this world. Every one of them is focusing on the environment. They're not waiting for the governments to solve this problem. They're doing it. When I first came here 30 years ago, you know, there was, no, there was no live fish in the river. Now you can take your fishing pole and go out to the river and, and, and collect fish. They've really made tremendous changes. But they start with a very strong philosophy that people can believe in. To me, the most successful manager that I have found in Japan lately is Mr. Inomori. I introduced him to you in my notes. Inomori. And Japanese is just a transliteration, except I is, an, I is an E, probably the only difference. So Inamori is I-N-O-M-O-R-I, -I. In Inamori, Inamori. He was the chairman of Kyocera. And I hope you, if you haven't done it yet, I hope you will go to Kyocera's site and just study their philosophy. Study their vision, study their mission, you know, their purpose, their, their central, they're the, one of the most successful companies all over the world, leading company in the world in ceramics. But they're a great company. Inamori got up in age, just the way I have, and uh, the government of Japan asked him to please take over Japan Airlines. Japan Airlines was the national airline and it went bankrupt. How does the national airline Japan go bankrupt and how do they change it? Inamori came in two years later, $800 million in profit. What did he do? He got people to believe in themselves. He got people, this is what Paul was talking about today. I said, Paul, how can you travel the world the way you do? And he says, because, because of his belief that every employee of his company is really running that company. They're doing it. How do we do it? This is the essence of the Harada method, which is self-reliance. We're going to talk about Mirai. I won't do it this morning, but as we travel, we'll talk about all of the companies we're going to visit in advance. But Mirai is a jewel. It's a jewel of the philosophy. It's a jewel of the principles of that company. It's not a jewel what you're going to see. 
So when you're going to see, you're, gonna not, you're not going to see technology. At Mitsubishi, you're going to see the most advanced technology. We're going to go from one extreme to the other. Mitsubishi, you'll see great technology. Mirai, you'll see none. But Mirai represents the happiest company in Japan to work for. The happiest company in Japan to work for. What, that's the focal point. Mr. Yamada, unfortunately, he died last August. But Mr. Yamada's purpose was to make the happiest company in Japan to work for. But it's also probably the hardest company to work for. This is the process. What we're going to do is we're going to pick a goal. We're going to do something more. We're going to reverse this a little bit. I have pick a goal that motivates you and then determine a purpose. I want you to rethink this and what is your purpose? Come on, write this down. What is your purpose? What do you want from this life? This life will give you what you really want. The Bible says, ask and thy shall receive. The Bible says, ask and thy receive. The real funny thing is, people don't ask. So you don't ask and then you complain what you get. You complain, your, you complain about your life, but you're not asking deep enough and sincerely really what you want. So what is your real purpose? What do you really want in this life? That is what you want to work through here. Not so easy. What Harada says is... I want is to thank everybody online taking this workshop. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am giving it to you. And I want to give you your first homework assignment, which is I want you to write down these 50 things that you're proud of what you've done in the past. 50 things you really loved in your life. 50 things that you've accomplished. What are the good things you've done in your life? They might have been difficult, painful to go through because that's the way life teaches you. It teaches you by suffering, by having difficult things. But once you went through it, it was so hard for me to learn how to ride a bicycle. But boy, was I so happy when I rode the bicycle. It was so hard for me to learn how to ride a car drive a car. I'll never forget, I got in my head once, when I make a U-turn, why do I have to go this way? Why can't I go this way? That's logical. So I went this way and smashed the car into the tree. Well, I learned a lesson then, but it was great to learn how to drive. So I want you to think 50 things that you're proud of, and then I want you to pick up 10, first do the 50. You'll see the way these pour out. It doesn't take that long. Then take the 10 best that you like, look at those 10, and then take three that you're most proud of, then talk to your friends, talk to your associates, and say, you know, these are the things that I think I did the best in the past, what should I pick for my future? And then pick one. Pick one goal based upon your strength, based upon your experience. Doesn't mean you can't learn new things, but I want you to pick a solid goal, something that you feel wonderful about. That's your first assignment. 